This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. You can go through your life and you think that, hey, I'm just going through the routine. I'm just showing up for work. I'm just showing up and just serving. I'm just, you know, changing um, the, um, I'm just teaching in the classroom. I'm just, you know, doing whatever the mundane tasks are, the routine tasks. But all of a sudden, Jesus meets you there. welcome you this morning. We just believe that God is good and he has something good planned for you this day, this moment, this time. I just believe that it's important for us to seize every opportunity that we have to understand that there is so much more going for us than there is against us and to know that we have been made right with God through Jesus Christ that we are the apple of his eye, that we've been chosen as the beloved, as the accepted of God, and that he rejoices over us. He longs to bless us and cause us to experience all the things because he's a good, good father. And so we just thank you for tuning in and just carving out the time for the word of God. We know that his word is good and his word will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish that which is sent for to accomplish in our lives and that the word is able to um, discern, to, di um, to do all kinds of things, get rid of deception in our lives, cause us to see the mirror so that we can be changed and we could show the image of Christ and be transformed and conformed unto his plan for our lives and the destiny that he has planned for us. And so, this morning, we want to talk about something that I believe will encourage you in your walk with the Lord. We're titling this Right Place, Right Time. You know, it's a very critical, pivotal time in which we're living in today. Um, it is so vital that each and every one of us sees this moment, sees the opportunities, the doors that God opens for us, and to recognize that even in the midst of a pandemic, whatever it is that you may find, the season that you're in, but to know that God has his plan, his master plan for your life. And that plan is good. It is hopeful. It gives you a future and it has an expected end today. So we want to talk about this area of making sure that we seize what God has planned and recognize that as the body of Christ, we want to be in the right place at the right time. You know, being at the wrong place at the wrong time can cause death. We could look at the headlines over the last several years, just this decade, where people have lost their lives as a result of all kinds of things where the enemy has gotten involved and consequently lives have been destroyed. But there's something about the angelic presence of God, we understand that when God gets involved and he'll cause his blessing to pour out on our lives and cause us to be elevated and things that perhaps 
didn't seem like they were going to change, but all of a sudden, because God got involved, that healing just began to spring forth. Uh, something supernatural took place. Um, you may have met the right person because you were in the right place at the right time. And so there are so many things that I want us to really focus in on this morning because I want you to think about your life and understand that God wants you to be in his perfect plan, and that includes the right place and at the right time. And so we're going to look at some examples in the scriptures. We're going to look at um, those who have gone before us and as a result learn and begin to glean from the things that they have experienced in their life. Let's begin in 1 Peter chapter 5. We want to look at this in the message translation. Look at this in the message translation. We're going to look at um, verse 6. 1 Peter 5, verse 6 and verse 7. It says, so be content with who you are and don't put on airs. God's strong hand is on you. He'll promote you at the right time. Live carefree before God. He is most careful with you. So we understand even from this scripture that promotion comes by being in the right place at the right time. Promotion comes from God. You know, I've seen God promote people who other folks didn't even like, but you know why? Because his hand was upon them. I'm reminded of Joseph, how Joseph had the coat of many colors. He was the son who had dreams, who had imaginations of what he thought God wanted to do with his life and his family and told his brothers about it. And you know what? They were envious. They were angry about what Joseph had said. I'm sure they probably thought, Joseph, who do you think you are? How is it that you are the one who gets the dreams and gets the coat of many colors? What is so special about you? You know what was special about Joseph? It was the fact that God favored Joseph. The Bible talks about how the Lord found favor with him. So Joseph went through his life, and Joseph experienced a lot of things where they were envious of him, and they sold him into slavery. I'm sure things that he probably never had envisioned that he would encounter from his own family, by his own siblings. And he continued to move forward and continued to be in a very unfortunate circumstance, the most unfavorable thing by, you know, being in the pit and being in the lowest of the lowest places where they sold him in and and uh, hated him and were jealous of him and envious of him. But all of a sudden, the favor of God began to outshine the circumstances and the things that he was going through, and it elevated him into being in the position where he could receive the favor. And lo and behold, his brothers end up having to come to him in the days of famine because Joseph didn't let his circumstance keep him in a place from experiencing the favor of God. So it is in many lives, in many situations that I'm telling you, favor will outshine any plot of the enemy. Anything that the enemy can try to create, to devise against you, I'm telling you, when the grace and the favor of God gets on your life, it will promote you at the right time, at the right moment. And consequently, we'll see the hand of God 
we'll see the power of God. We'll see the favor of God. We'll see the goodness of God that will turn the enemy's plan and cause God's plan to prevail and to outweigh and to do wonderful things in our life. The Bible says that the race in Ecclesiastes is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong, neither is bread to the wise, riches to those with understanding, nor favor to skillful people. He says time and chance happens to everyone. Right happenings, right opportunities happen to everyone. Turn over to Psalms 37, verse 23. Let's look at this in the Amplified. Psalms 20, 37, verse 23. And so it says here, the steps of a good man or a good woman are directed and established by the Lord. When he delights in his way and he busies himself with his every step. So I want you to understand that your steps this morning are to be ordered by the Lord, directed and established by the Lord. You know, Joseph's steps were directed. They were established. Moses' David's steps were ordered by the Lord and were directed in his way. And he busies or she busies herself with his every step. I'm reminded of David. And David was one who, the Bible says, was a man after God's own heart one who made mistakes, one who wasn't perfect, had flaws, but you know, God loved him flaws and all. God was committed to David's life. So David, you know, was a young boy and he was a shepherd man and he was out in the field doing what shepherds do and taking care of the sheep and all the things that were necessary for the assignment that he was supposed to do. And consequently, he heard all this noise from what they perceived to be Goliath, this uncircumcised Philistine, this giant. And so David came in and was, you know, going through the normalcy of life, going through what his routine was. And so he asked as he arrived, he says, is there not a cause and is there not a reason for uh, God's plan and God's purpose to be established. And so they said, David, you don't belong here. You, you just go back out there where the sheep are and go back out there and be the shepherd that you're supposed to be and the menial task and do what you're supposed to do. But you know what? God was positioning David to experience elevation and to be promoted when his brothers and his siblings were running in fear and running as a result of what they saw from Goliath and the words that he was spewing out and the negativity and all the timidity that was taking place, you know what? David recognized, hey, this is a perfect time for me to step out on my covenant with Almighty God. He says, who is this uncircumcised? Philistine, that he would defy the armies of the living God. It was his time that he could step into the plan that God had, the opportunity that God presented before him. He didn't run back to shepherding, and he didn't run back in fear and, and uh, second guess, but you know what? He just stepped right up. He just answered the call. He sees the opportunity, and he believed that God would meet him right where he was because he was busying himself in the shepherd and in the field. And so consequently, when he showed up there on the battlefield, you know who showed up with him? The Almighty God. God met him right where he was and caused him to experience 
the reward that comes with obeying God and the opportunities that his life began to experience. He got the, the, the cash prize. He got the wife. He got all these things. You know why? Because he was in the right place at the right time. The right place at the right time. I'm reminded about Moses over in Exodus chapter 2. Look at verses 4 through 9. Exodus chapter 2 verse 4. It says, And his sister, referring to uh, Moses, stood some distance away to learn what would be done to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came to bathe at the river. And her maidens walked along the bank. And she saw the ark among the rushes and sent her maiden to fetch it. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby cried. She took pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse of the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the girl went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away. Nurse it for me, and I'll give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. But you know what? That little baby was at a place of possibly being destroyed. There was a decree that had gone out to kill, to destroy the lives. And so as a result, Moses' mother They put him in the basket. They sailed him down the river. And just so happened, he was apprehended from the river and his life was redeemed from destruction. His life took on a total different course. Moses' name means pulled out. You know, there may be people and things around you that have been designed by the enemy to try to destroy you. But just like Moses, God's plan prevailed. God opened a door. God caused Moses to experience his great salvation, his so great soterior. And as a result, He was able to be nursed. He was able to be nourished. He was able to be with the same family. He was able to be in a place where he would be protected and he would be safe. And so I want us to be encouraged in knowing that when you're in the right place and you're at the right time, God's power will keep you from being destroyed will preserve your life from destruction. You will be in the place of safety. You'll be in the place of protection. Though there was danger on every hand, I'm telling you, when you're in the hands of God and you know that God has you, you'll be safe. So I thank God for that example so we can understand and we can begin to gain concept that our steps are ordered by the Lord to meet the right people. God was the one who sent the woman out there to be at the brook, to be right there as Moses was sailing down in the basket. It was God who said, go out there. While you're bathing, and it was just a divine coincidence. And they just bumped into each other. And as we know, the rest is history. So God can 
intervene and he can get involved in our everyday affairs when we submit ourselves to him and we acknowledge him and we say, Lord, direct my steps. In all my ways, I acknowledge you. I honor you so that you can direct my path and you can cause me to be at the right place and at the right time and bump into the right person and experience what needs to be done. So it is with Ruth's life. You know, Ruth was a woman who um, had lost, experienced death and grief and all kinds of things. And she connected with Naomi and she recognized it. She said, no, Naomi, I see how, you know, you have God and I want your God to be my God. And so she went out to the field and she went out to serve and to do what was necessary. And lo and behold, when Ruth was out there in the field, you know what? She bumped into Boaz. She bumped into her Boaz. And so God, when we understand that God wants to intervene in our everyday affairs, if we're willing to serve him and we're willing to allow him to direct our lives, no telling what type of doors and favor promotions and elevations that we can begin to experience in our lives. Look over at John chapter 4, and we just want to walk through some of these um, examples, John chapter 4. And this was the woman who was at the well. I'm telling you, it's time for us to have an encounter with Jesus at the well. It's time for us to meet Jesus at this time and at this season and at this place. And consequently, our lives will be turned upside down. So when we look here in John chapter 4, it was so hot in Jerusalem that most would go to work early in the morning and take a long break during the middle of the day when it was the hottest. And then they would return to work later in the evening when it was cooler. And since the Samaritans were those who were despised by people, thank God Jesus didn't despise the Samaritans, but Jesus was intentional about including them by bringing them in, ministering to women, ministering to the Samaritans, going out of his way on an assignment so that he could remove burdens and he could destroy yokes. It was out of his compassion, the Bible says, that he um, extended his journey and went to a place where normally people would not go. But you know what? I believe it was all because it was time for a divine encounter. So this woman went to the well to draw water during the middle of the day when she did not expect to run into anyone. But you know who she ran into? She ran into Jesus. It is a normal sea of our lives. It may be, you know, where we're just kind of doing the, errands or running or going through the motions. And so it was when she had no idea who would await her at the well. And as a result of her going to the well, she ran into Jesus because Jesus knew that she would be there. She went for water, but he gave her living water so she would never thirst again. I'm telling you, you can go through your life and you think that, hey, I'm just going through the routine. I'm just showing up for work. I'm just showing up and just serving. I'm just, you know, changing um, the, um, I'm just teaching in the classroom. I'm just, you know, doing whatever the mundane tasks are, the routine tasks. But all of a sudden, 
Jesus meets you there. Are you at a crossroad looking for direction on which path to take? God seeks to give you divine direction and guide you to His best for you. In her life-changing series, Right Place, Right Time, Taffy Dollar takes us through the process of receiving direction from God and understanding how decisions give way to our ultimate destination. We have to make up in our minds when we're in the right place at the right time, the favor of God will show up and will show out in our lives. And the glory of God will be revealed and cause us to be elevated and to experience His goodness on our lives. We gotta stay positive. We've gotta stay in faith. We have gotta be steady. We gotta be patient. We've gotta be optimistic. Call or visit the website on your screen and get all four messages today for a love gift of $25 or more and rise above your circumstances. Men, it's our time to dive deeper at the 2021 Mentality Men's Conference. Join us online on September 10th and 11th for two days of dynamic teachings from Creflo Dollar, raw and uncut. You're trying to live by a code that's no better than trying to live by the Abrahamic law. It's going to require you trusting in what you can do more than trusting in God. You can trade in the man code and you can take hold of this gospel of grace and you can live by the finished works of Jesus Christ. Don't miss out on this revival of manhood at the 2021 Mentality Conference. We got to give you the word of God. You got to learn some stuff. Wake yourself up and get this on the inside of you. You cannot live without Christ. You're about to receive real resolution in your life. So mark your calendars and register today. Simply text MENTALITY to 51555 or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. Jesus instructed us to take this gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth. With the seeds you sow into Creflo Dollar Ministries, we extend this good news of grace to people on every single continent. They are empowered to see real change in their lives. That's exactly what you do when you send in your financial donations to support our outreach endeavors. You empower change in people's lives. And for that, we say thank you and God bless you. I'll see you next time here on Changing Your World. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. Thank you, partners and friends, 